Hey guys, Mike here, Grinding Gears Garage. Sorry it's been a couple days, or actually like a week since we uploaded a video. I was away on vacation for a wedding. So we're getting ready to work on our Raptor 250. Uh, we found the big board kit was installed all kinds of wrong. There was all kinds of issues. So we picked up a uh, very lightly used stock bore cylinder head. Uh, it was run for maybe two or three hours. The owner switched over to a race engine in his son's race Raptor to use for uh, the cross country racing. So we picked that up, picked up a new Wisco piston. We decided to go with the uh, stock compression, which is 10 and a half to one. They do sell uh, higher compression pistons. We decided to stay with a lower so we can still run uh, puff gas. So we got a new piston in, nice and shiny and new. And it came with the obvious uh, wrist pin, wrist pin clips, new ring set. So we're gonna get ready to measure ring and gap for our new rings. Uh, we got some measuring tools here. Uh, we'll go over what's all needed. I mean, a piece of paper with a pen helps jotting down measurements, make sure you're on top of everything so you don't try to remember. Uh, we have the ring installation instructions here from Wisco. We're just going to uh, use these mainly for the there's a chart here at the bottom that shows you clearance needed for your rings. Then we have some tools. We got our feeler gauges here, which is what we're going to use to measure the ring gap. We have a telescoping bore gauge. We're going to make sure the piston's actually going to fit our bore. Uh, outside micrometer and our dial calibers. Other than that, we pretty much don't need anything else. Uh, depending on the ring gap fit, we may break out some files that we have to uh, give the rings a little file to get a better tolerance. So other than that, it's pretty much it. So just follow along and we'll show you guys how to do ring and gap. Hey guys, Mike here, Grinding Gears Garage. Sorry it's been a couple days, or actually like a week since we uploaded a video. I was away on vacation. For a wedding so we're getting ready to work on our raptor 250 uh, we found the big board kit was installed all kinds of wrong there was all kinds of issues so we picked up a uh, very lightly used stock bore cylinder head uh, it was run for maybe two or three hours the owner switched over to a race engine in his son's race raptor to use for uh, the cross country racing so we picked that up, picked up a new Wisco piston. We decided to go with the uh, stock compression, which is 10 and a half to one. They do sell uh, higher compression pistons. We decided to stay with a lower so we can still run uh, puff gas. So we got a new piston in, nice and shiny and new. And it came with the obvious uh, wrist pin, wrist pin clips, new ring set. So we're going to get ready to measure ring and gap for our new rings. Uh, we got some measuring tools here. Uh, we'll go over what's all needed. I mean, a piece of paper with a pen helps jotting down measurements. Make sure you're on top of everything so you don't try to remember. Uh, we have the ring installation instructions here from Wisco. We're just going to uh, use these mainly for the there's a chart here at the bottom that shows you clearance needed for your rings. Then we have some tools. We got our feeler gauges here, which is what we're going to use to measure the ring gap. We have a telescoping bore gauge. We're going to make sure the piston's actually going to fit our bore. Uh, outside micrometer and our dial calibers. Other than that, we pretty much don't need anything else. Uh, depending on the ring gap fit, we may break out some files that we have to uh, give the rings a little file to get a better tolerance. So other than that, that's pretty much it. So just follow along and we'll show you guys how to do ring and gap. So first things first, we need to make sure our new piston here fits the bore of our used cylinder. Now with these, these are aluminum bore, so they are nickel coated. Uh, you can't hone these, it'll ruin the coating. Luckily we picked up a cylinder that has uh, still has a good cross hatching. Uh, there's not a whole lot of glazing on it, so it's still good to use. Uh, if you'd have to get it honed, you have to send it out to a place to uh, 
uh, they recode it, hone it, and they it's like a $180 process. So first things first, we're going to measure our piston. And we measured that already with our four gauges. I'm just going to do it real quick here with our dial caliper. I believe it was 2.910, give or take like half a thousand. So, piston, 2.910. So now we're going to take our telescoping bore gauges. We're going to measure the bore at a couple different spots. Uh, your bore is going to wear differently. We want to make sure it's semi-straight. And I believe we measured this before, and I think it's within the thousands, top to bottom. So for these bore gauges, they telescope in and out. So you're going to place it inside the bore here. What you're going to do is snug up on this. It's oh. so when you... Snug up and then push down. It'll uh, it didn't work that time. Snug up on it, push down, and it sets itself. All right, check it. Look at that. 2.9. Half thousandths. I gotta check clearances, but I think that's right for these. Yes, it says clearance is 15 thousandths. 15 ten thousandths, sorry. So we're right there on the money. So what we're gonna do is take our new piston, drop her in there. Now with this, you see how it's a flat top piston? We're gonna actually use the piston as our resting place and we're going to install our ring so you get a nice flat you're evenly in the bore because the piston's flat so you get the ring even pick the bore off of the piston and then we'll do our measurements we'll just show you guys real quick how to do that now we we have our bore upside down mainly because it puts us in the middle of our uh, usable bore uh, the bottom half of the bore doesn't really get used that much so we want to try and stay somewhere in the middle. If you flip it up the other way, you're more towards the bottom. So this way we're in the middle, get a better reading, get you know more of the usable bore for the rings. <clears throat> so we have our rings laid out here. This is your oil ring, the top and bottom. And then I have to figure out, I think the this is your compression ring, this is your oil skirt ring. I'm not 100%. I think that's how it is because if you look, that gap's larger. Your second ring always has a larger ring gap. Anyway, this is a chart here I was talking about. Uh, pretty much how you do the measurement of what your ring end gap should be uh, is your top ring. So this is for an ATV. The bore in inches, which was 2.910, we're going to multiply that by 40 ten thousandths. And that'll give us our clearance for our top ring, and then 50 ten thousandths for our second ring. And then there's a few other things here and there we're going to uh, go over. It's pretty easy. So we're going to place our top ring in. We're going to do some quick math here with the chart, figure out what this gap should be. But we're going to install that and check our top ring and gap. So you can see we have our top ring in place. We did our math and we need, uh, looks like 11 thousandths, 11.6 thousandths. So we're going to run somewhere between 11 to, we probably should actually go to 12. I don't have anything to measure that 0.6. So we're going to go to 12 thousandths, which is close. So as you can see, pull this off the bore. You can see our ring gap, Get some sunlight in there, and it's fairly tight. We're going to take our feeler gauges here and we're going to see what we got. So we got our feeler gauges out. It looks like we're right around, 
ten thousandths. It's got a little, it's probably more around nine. Yeah, see, we just actually, so you got to be careful. We just pushed a little hard and it actually moved the ring. So we're going to flatten it back out. So right around nine thousandths. So we got to go uh, three thousandths bigger on this ring. So we're gonna bust out our, I have these small files. They're meant for brushes on a motor, but they will work for rings. They're real fine, real tiny. Get in there, file three thousands off. Now, <clears throat> like what uh, Weisco talks about here for filing the gaps, you wanna make sure you file from one side only and you are <clears throat> keeping them square. You don't want them to taper like so so <clears throat> so we are going to grab our files let's see if we can get three thousandths out of our top ring so this is the file we're going to be using it's a needle file i have this whole set here with a whole bunch this is a flat file real not real aggressive teeth on this file so we're going to go ahead and hit this a few times and see what we get for uh, measurement. Hopefully we can keep it right around three thousandths taken off so we can keep around our gap of uh, twelve thousandths. So we're right about there. I gotta take a little tiny. We're just at eleven thousandths. It just barely goes in and slides. So one thing we always want to we want to continue to stress every time you measure make sure you place the bore back on the, the piston back on the bore so you're getting a nice flat measurement. We're going to file this a little bit more and we should be right on the money. One thing you want to make sure is we always file from the same side, but after you're done filing, you want to do two strokes on the edges here to clean up any burrs. Ours is clean for right now. We're going to take a little bit more material off and hopefully we'll be right on the money. So we got our gap set up. There's our 12 thousandths. Goes in with a little resistance. It's kind of hard to see. But it's in. So our top ring is done. We're going to set that off to the side. We're going to move on to our second ring here, which we need a gap of right around 14 and a half thousandths to 15. We're going to try and stay in between. So we're going to go ahead and install that piston sitting nice and flat so we're gonna start at 12 see what that's at oh, 12 is nothing 14 is slight resistance Fifteen is snug. Reset this. Double check fifteen again. There, now you can see that a little bit better. Fifteen snug, but fourteen fits. So I'd say we're good. We're right in the middle of what we need to be. So now that's good. I do not believe the oil rails have a uh, a gap. They just come from factory how they are. Oh, there it is. Oil rails may be installed without modifying the end gap. The gap should be a minimum of ten thousandths. So we're going to just check those real quick for you here. We're going to set the camera down, install one of them, check it, and do the same for both. All right, so we just checked both of our oil rings. They're right around 11 thousandths gap, end gap. So those are good. So thanks for watching, guys. That's how to check, set, check and set your ring end gap. Uh, we're going to go over in another video installing the rings on our piston. Uh, this thing should hopefully be together in a couple days, uh, hopefully in like two days. Uh, so we should have some video of us uh, Checking it out. Uh, I have to take the car back apart and rejet it for stock bore since we're no longer big bore. But other than that, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, check back on the channel in a couple days. We should have some more updates on the Raptor. Hopefully, some more updates on our other projects. 
As always, please like, comment with any questions. We'll help you to our best of our ability. And always subscribe. Have a good one.